Folks, hello again. Uh, John and I this week are talking about the impressions of Americans with regard to higher education to uh, a comparison between two and four year institutions about the uh, thought that uh, colleges should focus on career preparation. Uh, so, John, you your point of view in uh, the last segment was that uh, while it's important to build the knowledge base of the individual, the rounded knowledge of the individual, uh, colleges should strive to provide perhaps more directed technical know-how uh, about potential careers is that is that a good uh, descriptor of what you're saying if not please yeah yeah i think it's a good start i mean i would probably just broaden it to you know meeting the needs and demands and desires of the customers which is to feel that they have clarity that the path that they are going to go on is going to you know take them where they want to go or someplace positive, right? And so in a lot of fields, it is going to be technical skills and, and instilling confidence that gaining a, that, that the technical skills that they're going to learn are going to directly correlate to job opportunities and job relevance, and that you as an institution are going to effectively be able to instill those skills in them. But there's going to be a lot of other fields, right? I think that the skills are going to be less, less technical, but still wanting to feel like they're being armed and ready for battle. That's going to make them most competitive to, to, to enter the workforce. So if we were to take this pre high school graduation or, or GED completion, what do you see the messaging and how do you see us presenting the information to youth about why college and why have a, a more rounded uh, education? And from there, I'd like us to also pivot and talk about how can we embed both the technical and the general education in together so they're blending so the student is seeing the why they're taking this class or that class? So I'm honestly curious to hear your thoughts on the first part. Okay. Uh, so turning the tables on me. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I, the way I look at things is – is uh, Currently, given that uh, there are more job opportunities that there are uh, adults in the U.S., there is more of an attraction to 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 join a the workforce and potentially potentially start earning monies when you would be need to, uh, need to take out loans to go to college. So, so, and it makes sense, right? Um, so how can we go about it and talk to youth about the opportunity of actually going to college because it provides you opportunities that you may not be able to get to afterwards. To give you an example, if I am a diesel mechanic and I'm wrenching all day and under a truck and over a, an engine and what have you, I might reach the age of 40 and my joints are killing me and I can't do that. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but that is not far off of what we hear from many. Mm -hmm. But if I have a higher education to fall back on, I can be the supervisor. I can own my own business and know how to get there perhaps a little faster. While maybe this is a little bit um, naive, but it, it goes back to the discussion that we were having in the prior segment. At the same time, I think, and, and you'll probably agree with me, a, that a flexible education, modalities, scheduling, and, and supportive education is possibly 
more attractive than the rigid you, you know mm-hmm. you have to be here in person those hours and that competes with the with the job so this is my perspective you 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 i mean I asked you the question you turned it back at me what do you think do you see it differently and tell me what your thoughts are yeah no no i agree um I, so on the first part you know i think it's it always comes back to the institution has to find a way based upon what modern or what the current trends are of the time of being able to communicate with the prospective student. I think a a story that, that paints the picture of how the institution can help them get to whatever future it is that they imagine for themselves. And so, and to do that, you have to touch, you know, on a number of different areas as far as offering, you know, the programs that are going to be relevant for that prospect, right. um, affordability of said program, effectiveness of said program, et cetera. But I really think that it comes down to connecting with them and where they want to go and being able to quickly, incredibly associate y- your institution with being the the turbo boost or the trampoline that will help launch them to that desired future that they have. And so based upon, you know, current trends, challenges, expenses of, of reality now, there's an, I think there's an increased emphasis on focusing on how you can tactically make a difference in their, their ability to get a job quickly and focus on those skills. And if, if, if things weren't as challenging financially and, you know, cost of goods and homes, et cetera, weren't such a, at a a high percentage of income compared to many years ago, you know, then there wouldn't be such stress and pressure. And so then you might feel like you have the luxury of, of, you know, broadening your knowledge base into other areas that aren't as tactically focused on where you want to get to. But I think as as the stress level increases, then you focus on what is absolutely necessary to get you where you're, where you want to go. So yeah, and, and I was as you were talking, I was thinking if we can wrap education around the life and work of the of the population, maybe that's the way where where you know. Th- that population can have both the education and the jobs and the life that they deserve as opposed to having to choose because what what's currently most likely happening is put people are putting off education because they are good jobs right it shouldn't be a binary decision making in my opinion correct yeah i agree i see you shaking your head what's what's your thought when i say that yeah, no, 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 I, I, no, hundred percent, hundred percent agree, and it's just that's on us, right, to uh, be able to communicate our value and to 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 convey the story that that we're going to be the most beneficial path that's going to pay the dividends for for where they for where they want to go. You know, right? And, you know, and I think it, an, another reality that factors in is because everything again outside of education with with the advancements again over the last 20 10 20 years where everything has become so much easier right we can expect to have any information or anything that we want incredibly quickly right a couple of couple of taps on our on our phone and things arrive in hours or days etc and so life has a lot of things about life have become an easy button and so um even segue and you know to what you talked about as far as direct admissions i think a, a lot of things have have focused around consumer like experiences and reducing any friction like the, the more it doesn't take almost any friction yeah. to accomplish somebody going from where they are to where you want them to get to where they'll they will tap out of whatever that is and so um, direct admissions being, a, a, I think, a perfect example of where anything you can do to automate or reduce a step where a person has to, if you can do for them what they would have had to do, right, then that's that's going to help both them and you institutionally. 
Right. So you've got the direct admission in Wichi, the Western uh, Compact for Higher Education, uh, has a lot of very uh, good information on. And we'll catch up on this one next time we talk. And uh, that's an important one. I'm going to say the Department of Education highly recommending each high schooler to complete a FAFSA before they're done. So they already are ahead. They filled it out. They have mm-hmm. the information and whether or not they qualify. Uh, I'm going to say, a, uh, why are we still stuck to the semester or the quarter? Uh, a schedule, you know, the the routine nine to two, Monday through Thursday schedule, as opposed to, you know, we teach when people are most sure. likely available. Yes, if, and- if you've got... So go ahead. And via the mo and to, leading to what you had commented before and the modalities, right? So it's flexible. Exactly. So adding flexibility to the services that we provide, which again segues, you know, or ties back to I think folks' expectations in all of the other parts of the the consumer parts of their lives, right? Everything's become easy. We can have what we want, where we want, how we want, when we want, et cetera, et cetera. And so um being able to wrap educational services, which tended to be very, very structured, fixed, uh, locality based, right? And then just modernizing that to, you know, to modern kind of e-commerce style expectations that we have yes. to be able to wrap into and fit into their lives how and when they want. Obviously, there are challenges that come with that as far as eff- effectiveness, right? And trying to maintain effectiveness of in, in quality of education and and in competency and the skills that they pick up but separate from that that's you know a combination of our problem and, and a student's problem to solve but it doesn't change the fact that there's the demands and expectations to 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 wrap our services into the expectations that that everybody has now when they can have you know what they want when they want it I, I cannot agree more. Uh, John, let's, let's, uh, perhaps, uh, next time we talk in two weeks, let's, let's target this, uh, particular topic, the flexibility, the modalities. You, you think a lot and you research that topic a lot. So I think you, you would be a wealth of information for the listeners. With that said, uh, folks, that was uh, another, uh, a uh, week of uh, Let's Talk Ed. We come to you every other week. Uh, John and I are grateful for you. We'd like you to uh, like, share, and subscribe if you're on uh, uh, YouTube. If you're, you know, if you can get us wherever you'd like to get your uh, podcast, ring the bell if you'd like to be notified of any releases. And we look forward to seeing you next time.